Now the matter is what you need to do. And I'll go through a few slides here, but we're gonna, we're gonna work our way back to what Tony discussed in, re, in regards to uh, finding an investment advisor. But the first thing you need to understand when you're planning for retirement, the first thing you need to do is find out what are your goals? Is it just retirement right now or do I have to plan for something else? Do I have uh, three daughters that haven't been married yet that I have to take care of their weddings? Um, am I gonna be traveling more? Uh, do, I still have, uh, do I still have kids in college that I have to take care of? You have to understand what all of your expenses will be. And not only understanding the big expenses, but also determining what your current expenses are so you can get a better understanding of what you'll need for retirement. So what I tell clients to do is track your, track your current spending for 30 days. Uh, use a spreadsheet, you can use Quicken. There's a couple different sites out there. Basically, you're looking at your cash flow and also remember the other expenses that aren't on a monthly basis or less than a monthly basis. I pay my life insurance on an annual basis, my car insurance every six months. You've got utility bills that may come in quarterly like my water bill. Make sure you take those into account when you're taking a look at your current spending. And then once you get all that in the list, what I like to tell clients is check mark or put an asterisk next to the ones that are a necessity versus ones that are discretionary. Why? Because when you get to your retirement spending, if you're looking at, am I going to, am I going to live on a, uh, on a necessity basis or live on my lifestyle, those will help determine the differences you will need for your investments. So now you've, done, you've looked at your current spending, but when you retire, your spending habits will change. Most, in most cases, you won't have a mortgage anymore. You've paid off uh, most of the colleges or the colleges are gone and hopefully your children have, uh, have gone through all their weddings and you're not in a savings mode anymore. You're in retirement, you're in a spending mode. So you're going to have different expenses, but once you lose those expenses, other, other expenses will come into play, such as more health insurance costs, some prescriptions. Uh, you might tend to travel a little more than when you were working, and leisure activities, going out, going out more often, uh, seeing a few movies, what have you. So it's very important to understand what you also, what you have today, but what you're also going to estimate for your retirement. Once you do that, you can inventory all your financial resources. Take a look at what you have. And you look at your earned income, how much are you earning right now? I'm okay, I'm a 50 year old, I'm earning this amount, I can save this, this amount of money per year until I retire at age 65. You look at your retirement plans. If you have 401k plans or pension plans, which have gone a little bit to the wayside, but hopefully all of those will remain intact, uh, any types of IRAs, SEPs, simple plans, your Roth IRAs. Take a look at your, pool your CDs, your brokerage accounts, your trust accounts. Um, also look at what, the in, what your normal income cash flows will be from certain areas, such as your Social Security, or if you have uh, rental properties, what your monthly cash flow will be from your rental properties, your inheritances, maybe, you, you, maybe your mother or father is in their late uh, 70s or 80s or 90s, you may stand a chance to inherit some, some funds, or any other types of sources that are available out, out there for you. Once, you. once you take a look at your inventory sources, then you can put it, put it all together and build your plan. Uh, you've got, you know what your financial goals are, you know somewhat going through all the processes, what your assets and liabilities, what your insurance needs will be, how much those will affect you, um, how much retirement income you will have uh, and need, and how much your portfolios will, will last. Now, the easiest way to find out, do I have enough to retire, uh, if you're doing this yourself, you can use present value calculations and future value calculations. You can find that online. Um, but putting it all together, what 
Tony remarked about, what Jay remarked about, the best way to plan for your retirement is to have someone help you. I think Tony, Tony noted having a quarterback, and it's very important to have a quarterback in your plan. Why? Because, uh, and I'll be guilty of it too, we, all, we always say, oh, I'll get to it. I'll get to it tomorrow. I'll get to it next week. But we never do. Or by the time we get to it, we're going to be so far behind that it's going to take a lot harder effort to get back to where we have. So find yourself, and, and if we go through the next steps, you need to find a quarterback out there, an investment advisor that not only looks at your investments, but looks at your, your entire needs. And they're out there. What I suggest going through what Tony, what Tony mentioned, find somebody that's trustworthy, someone you can trust, somebody that has uh, a background, somebody that's credited with, with, uh, with certain accreditations, as he mentioned, CFPs or CFAs. Basically, someone you can go to and say, okay, what do I need to do? And I'm expecting you to keep me on track. And in order for you to keep on track with uh, the 2010 and 2011 tax strategies, I'm going to hand it over to John Herbers.